Are you guys in tune? Check, check, check. That's a good take, though. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. You plugged into the CBC Radio 3 sessions. Hi, I'm Tarek, and welcome to the show. Come on, are a Toronto power trio that pack a lot of raw rock force into short three minute blasts. Songwriter, guitarist, and well known producer Ian Blurton delivers his heavy guitar rock riffs using a Marshall amp that is only set to one volume, loud, and he's accompanied by a driving rhythm section consisting of Dean Dallas Bentley on drums and Katie Lynn Campbell on bass. Their diligent take-no-prisoners approach to touring has given them the reputation as a band that loves to play for their fans wherever and whenever possible, delivering electric, house-wrecking live performances every time. After much rigorous cross-Canada touring in support of their extensive catalogue, Come On unleashed the blazing, full-length album Bottled Lightning of an All-Time High to Hungry Ears in 2007. In addition to touring and recording their own albums, Ian Blurton has a growing reputation as a producer for hire, working in a variety of musical styles and with artists like Amy Milan, The Reostatics, The Weaker Thans, and Tricky Woo. Come On turned up their amps to 11 in our Vancouver studios in March of 2008, and they powered up the session with Come Taste the Rock. Rolling. Hi, this is Ian. Katie Lynn. You should yell Dean. They can't hear you that. He said Dean, in case you can't hear him. <laughs> this first song is called Come Taste the Rock, and it's an invitation of all the great places in this world to come taste the rock. <laughs> Come on, on the CBC Radio 3 Sessions. Yeah! All right. <laughs> Welcome to Vancouver, Ian Blurton. It's great to be back. <laughs> Maybe I'll get you to do the uh, introductions of everyone in the band here with you today, if you will. we got Dean Dallas Bentley on the uh, traps. Can we hear some cowbell? Just one cowbell out. That's what he does. And then we got Katie on the bass in the other room doing the bookings for the ferry. <laughs> She's going to jump in the room here, hopefully, pretty soon. So. Yeah, I don't have to introduce myself, do I? Well, Hi, I'm Ian. I play guitar and sing. I'm a Sagittarius. My eyes are blue. 
I was walking around and I actually looked at your setup for your guitar and your amps, and I noticed you, I don't think any pedals down there. It is just... No, nope, no pedals. So what is the deal there? Straight just, in, volume. Is that kind of like a more classic approach to... Yeah, that's like an Angus approach. Okay. Or, yeah, pretty much Angus. And judging from that first song, that was you, you get some pretty sweet tones out of that, so you don't need to, to worry about having the pedals and stuff. Hopefully yeah. not. <laughs> so well, Katie is... Uh, hopefully going to uh, come dashing in here in a moment as we get ready for the next song. But um, I just wanted to clarify, so she still lives in New, New Orleans? Then? Yes, she is. She's American. Okay. And We're a cross-border uh, experiment by the two governments to see if Canadians and Americans can live together. How's that going so far? It's going pretty good. Yeah. So do you spend part of your time there? Yeah. Yeah, I was born okay. in the States, so I, I can still cross fairly easily. Yeah. So I spend a lot, as much of my time down there as possible. No snow. And then does she come up for summers in Toronto kind of thing? Yeah. I mean, she has to, she has to stay down there and work. And I come, I mean, I have to come up and work here. So mm -hmm. I just come up whenever. Yeah. We like traveling. So, I mean, it's like, it's just, I don't know. You're traveling in a band all the time anyway. So, and it's really only two days away. Oh, okay. It's not like any worse than being in Moncton or Winnipeg and coming to Toronto for a show or whatever. Uh, and and so I guess speaking of the traveling, uh, you've been doing lots of that since you've been in, on the West Coast, going yep. out to back Victoria, and 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 so you're doing some recording out there, is that right? Yeah. Yesterday we made a new single, okay, um, with our friend Daryl. Do you record in Victoria often, or no? We've never recorded in the studio before, but it's the guy who's worked on pretty much all our records. Okay, lives and that's there, Daryl. Daryl Smith. Daryl Smith. Yeah. The God like Daryl Smith. Yeah, we just chose to record out there because we were going to be around the area. We've always wanted to try this little studio, Butler Studios. And Dean was telling me, actually, as we were, Dean the drummer, was, as we were unloading gear, that there was a possibility that you might have recorded your last record, Bottle Lightning, in Victoria. But Yeah, yeah but uh, yeah, our old label, uh, they, ought, they offered us a great deal for the studio for like a month or three weeks or whatever because yeah. the guy was out of town. And our last label basically balked at the idea, which is pretty funny considering how cheap it would have been, you know? Right. It would have been, you know, a couple thousand dollars as opposed to being 10 or whatever. How come you don't record your own albums? Because you're a producer, so... Um, I mean, we did, we produced, the band produced Bottled Lightning, but it's it's nice to just play guitar and sing. Yeah. Having to worry about a lot of stuff is can be a drag sometimes, you know? It's just nice to play. But me being a producer kind of... Not that it doesn't have anything to do with this band, but I mean, when we're, I'm in this band, I'm not thinking about producing. I'm more thinking about like trying to write good songs and mm -hmm. do good shows and stuff like that. All right, well, we'll talk more about the production stuff a little bit later. Let's go back to the music. Next song you're going to play is called Psychotic Retraction. Can you set this one up for us? Mm, in the key of B? God, I don't know what there is to say about this song. It's about a friend of ours who kind of uh, started on a downward spiral and... It's a hopefully inspirational hymn to get him back up out of the downward spiral. All right. This is Come On on the CBC Radio 3 Sessions. The song is Psychotic Retraction.
Every Friday, Grant Lawrence turns your MP3 player into your source for new Canadian rock, pop, hip hop, singer songwriters, alt country, and electronica. Go to cbcradio3.com and click on podcasts to find the CBC Radio 3 podcast with Grant Lawrence. You're listening to the CBC Radio 3 sessions with Come On. This is about looking through couches for spare change and uh, giving blood. So that was the song I Want It All by Come On, who are my guests on the CBC Radio 3 sessions. It's sounding very excellent here in Studio (laughs) 2. (laughs) <laughs> Excellence is what we aim for. Absolutely. And I, and I mentioned, actually, Ian, I'm going to talk to you a little about the production stuff, but one of the albums that comes to mind when I think about the production is the Amy Milan record, Hunt right. for the Tombs. I think that, you know it's such a different record, a bluegrass record, a country record from what we're hearing um, right now in this session. What, what are some of the challenges of making um, a, a record like that when... You come well, with that background. record, keeping myself and Amy sober and not falling out drunk on the floor <laughs> is probably the main challenge okay. of that record. But I mean, a record like that, it's just like hanging out with a friend, you know? I mean, Amy's a, known Amy for a long time. She's a really good friend of both of ours, and she's a sweetheart, and I love her, and she's great, great songs, you know? And she just wanted to be in a totally different atmosphere than stars, so... Was it, and because it was a bluegrass record, was it kind of like the one microphone? Did you kind of Yeah, a lot of the songs the were one, one microphone straight to it. Vocals and guitar? Like, yeah, everything wow. live with the banjo player standing in the corner. And wow. then when his solo would start, he'd walk to the middle. And yeah, I was doing tape delay live. Like everything is completely just a quarter inch live to quarter inch tape. Oh, it, it sounds like a fantastic record. Another one that you worked on, the Weaker Than's latest record. Mm-hmm. Was that actually recorded in in a, in a warehouse? Like, yeah, yeah, actually okay. in a yeah in a warehouse. Case where making, they, yeah, case making warehouse. Yeah, it was really fun. It was cold though. <laughs> Winnipeg's pretty cold in the winter time. Winnipeg winter warehouse. Yeah, yeah, it's maybe the time where you say, "Let's go to New Orleans yeah. and make yeah, that or, record." Or how about you pay me double? <laughs> Toronto wouldn't be your first choice of a place to live in, I guess. <laughs> I mean, no, like it's it's a nice place to spend half of half of the year. Yeah, the, the warmer half. Yeah, I mean, it's cool because I've never. It's the biggest city I've ever lived in. I mean, like I grew up in Kentucky, and you know, not like small town Kentucky, but I mean, all the towns in Kentucky are pretty small. So, and then you know, New Orleans is not not that big a place either, like five hundred thousand tops before for everything. So it's kind of exciting to, you know, like to live in a neighborhood like Toronto where there's so many different kinds of neighborhoods. Yeah. And like, so it's nice. I like it. Yeah, and I was, I was watching this movie. It was about producers and creativity. And one of the things um, one producer said was, you know, if, if he's making a record, he always tries to use the talent that's in the room. That's kind of his mantra, or one of his mantras. And I'm sure you have many of them. Is there is there one that comes to mind when you think about going in and make a record that you think... You know, this is the one that stands out as my way of, of producing records. 
Wow. Mm. Not really? <laughs> <laughs> not really. Try not to do the same thing over and over again. So Maybe that's the maybe mantra that's right it. there, yeah. Yeah, maybe that's it. It's easy to get, making records, it's really easy to get stuck into just doing what you feel safe doing. But I've, I've watched some producers do some incredible things, including like kick all the mics over so that the engineer had to re-mic everything. Like stuff like that is pretty funny. Not so funny <laughs> the engineer, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, break up the monotony of, I mean, recording can be really just like, all right, do another guitar, uh, mm-hmm. you know. It, it's it's got to be like a, a such a different thing, obviously, when you're when you're playing. Just get the, like you said, playing the live show and the energy, even that we're feeling right here in the studio. It's mm-hmm. just it's just I don't know. Is it more fun just to just to play and oh, worry absolutely. about all that stuff? Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. It brings out a lot more youthful feelings than producing a record, right? Which makes you feel like an old man. <laughs> 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 no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> There was a song that one that a band did, the Black Halos. I know you're, you're familiar with those guys. Absolutely, yeah. They came in and did a song, and it was called "The Darkest Corners," and they dedicated the song to sort of all the divey bars that they've played. <laughs> right, right. Nice. You know, and I know that. Well, and, and some of the things that I've been reading, you guys will. It's almost like a point. You'll play places, you know, that other bands won't go to. And yeah, and, not that other bands won't go there, but not too many frequently. bands go over there. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Well, is, is we'll there, go to the dark side. Right. <laughs> It's not always dark. We played a wedding in St. Stephenville, New Brunswick, two and a half years ago. It was just two fans. Yeah, this, asked us wow. To, this couple that used to come, that they had moved to Halifax, and they would come and come and see us all the time in Halifax. And Nick one, day. yeah, one time they were like, "Hey, if we got married, would you play our wedding?" And we were like, "Yeah, sure." And then the next time we came back through, they were like, "Hey, we're getting married. Like, still want to play our wedding?" And we were like. Yeah. So they were getting married the weekend that you were going no, through. No, no, no. So, oh. then, so we so they, we planned the whole. Yeah, like, we booked oh, a tour. Wow. We booked it. a whole tour, a whole yeah, a whole tour out east around it, and we played. That was the first. Holy. The first show of the tour was playing their their wedding reception in St. Stephensville, New Brunswick. Yeah. And that is awesome. amazing. Yeah, they it was, it was at like fun. a legion yeah. hall, and Ian was like standing on the table in front of like grandparents <laughs> and like playing guitar. And stuff. <laughs> it was really cool. Yeah, it was really fun. Well, I mean, even just hearing some of these stories, this is the this is the feeling I'm getting is that your band, I mean, like it's about the playing live. It's still about that kind of stuff. And even, you know, again, with that song, The Darkest Corners and Billy Hopeless is sort of, mm-hmm. he, he said, I feel really comfortable in those in those divey bars. That's yeah, why I like absolutely. playing there. Is, there. is there kind of that same feeling here? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, if, you know, I'm sure like, the, in the, in, again, in the same way, the Halos, I mean, I, we care more about our fans and, and playing the music than probably almost anything else. And that's, that's the most important thing in the long run anyways. I mean, whether whether you connect with somebody, not whether you connect with somebody at a, a record company or a magazine. I mean, that's that's a fleeting moment at the best of times. Record companies, what are those? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, like, I mean, at the you know, at the best of times, that's a fleeting moment. But with a fan thing, a one-on-one thing, mm-hmm. it's more like friends, you know? It's like we have a lot of people that come out to our shows that are like, we know them and have gotten to know them. It's not a responsibility. It's actually really fun. You know, yeah. it's like these people can become your friends. Makes touring a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, it really does. All right. Well, you're listening to the CBC Radio 3 Sessions. It is Come On. We are going to hear some more music right now. The song, the next song you're going to play is called Waste My Time. Oh, it's just a strictly a make-out song. <laughs> it's a make-out song. Baby, can you waste my time in the best possible way? I love it. Here we go. This no is problem. Come On on the CBC Radio 3 Sessions.
Oh, this song. Here we go. This is a heavy tune. Yeah. All right. How's everyone doing tonight? All right, great. Uh. This little tune here, it's about being on a ship. Being on a ship, maybe perhaps being the captain. Whole thing's going down. Can't get your Dairy Queen like you want. Ship sinking in a hot fudge Sunday. And please check out the solo in this. The very first note is very nice. This is the CBC Radio 3 Sessions with Toronto Band. Come on. We just heard the song, This Is Your Captain. Rattling the walls of the CBC. <laughs> I think that's fantastic. Yeah. There's like, a, actually, no one can see it, but there's like, there's about 20 security guards in the control room right now, and they're smoking and they're drinking. <laughs> and uh, they're ordering pizzas when they should be guarding the front door because yeah. they're just having so much fun. I just, that's it. As soon as you guys come around, it's everybody just lets their guard down, man. Yeah. Party time. Yeah, it's party time. Ian, you've been playing music for so long, like, you know, Change of Heart in the 80s, and you've been doing this and playing the live, and we talked a little bit about the live performance and your dedication to the fans. I don't get any sense that this that there was ever a dull day for you doing this or ever a time where you go, ah, oh, well, I don't know. Do I really want to tour? Is that, you ever get those I like feelings touring Canada. What? I really like touring Canada. The only dark days are when we're not playing, really, for me. Yeah, yeah or when we're driving from Ottawa to Calgary. Yeah, that can be a bit boring, for sure. <laughs> or when, or we're, not, maybe when, or when we we're, we're not dri- driving from Ottawa to Calgary, yeah. we're stuck between Sudbury and Sault Ste. Marie with a tire Flat that tire. looks like Godzilla snag out of it. What is the deal with the flat tires? Do you guys get a lot of those? Because as we were unloading the van, you guys have your own personal like uh, hydraulic lift. Yeah, uh, doesn't that, which doesn't all. work on our van. Why we? Then that's part of the reason we were stuck. We thought it would work. Uh, what but. was that story now? 
Oh, we uh, blew a tire. Up. We blew a tire. No, in. but you were but you were stuck this weekend uh, in yeah, a that parking. Was the yeah, tour. yeah. That was the second time on this okay. tour. At the SO, after we after we loaded out of Pub Three Forty, we were gonna you know closer to the ferry to to get a hotel so we could get up and go to Victoria to record yesterday. And cars like the tire was kind of low. We got and we're like, oh, I'll just go put some air in it. So we drove up to an SO and put some air in it. And then the more air we put in it, the more we heard this noise. Right. We're like, so this was after mm, the that's gig. That's feedback. Oh, yeah. So like, it's not the ringing in my ears. I don't know. And it was, yeah, it was after. So it was like, I don't even know what time. And we were three thirty four in the morning. Already half in the bag with shots and whatnot. So <laughs> it, we called we called AAA because we have two jacks in the car. And neither one of them. That one is of them funny because you had this. You had a spare tire. Right? Yeah. You oh have, yeah. You have. Oh yeah. yeah. We had the spare tire. Yeah. We have two two jacks, including like you said, the yeah. the shiny fire engine red half ton hydraulic thing that's good for Just nothing. Just won't fit under our around. van. Which brings me back to the question I asked you off the top of this. Does it ever get to, Is there any moments where you're like, I don't No, know I mean, that's that. fun. I mean, that's, you know, that's if, gosh, I mean, if you're a musician and you want to be living and for real, I mean, like people like Hendrix would do like, I mean, they would be in the studio for three hours from four to seven. Then they would go and play two shows and then they'd come back at two in the morning and do a couple more hours. And I mean, you know, Hank Williams, all those guys, I mean, they worked their asses off. They yeah. played all the time. And they record it all the time. And it's just like, I think that, you know. Bands these days are soft. Yeah, bands these days are soft. And <laughs> they're like, all the ba- all the other bands they are like off. soft ice cream. We're like hard ice cream <laughs> with nuts and chocolate. We're like the kind that you're like the kind you have to flex to, to get it out of the... We bend the spoon. Get it out of the we bend the, yeah. When you're trying to get the ice cream out and the spoon bends, I'm, that's I'm, what we I'm are. I'm feeling a t-shirt like slogan. <laughs> we bend the spoon. That'd be you don't so go well good. starving hungry hot dog t-shirt. No, I, I'm just kidding. There's a lot of other hard bands out there, but those soft bands better watch out. We're going to eat them. <laughs> With our bed spoon. <laughs> you guys, it's been great once again. Thank you so much for coming Thank in. For Thanks for having us. us. Absolutely. Well, we can't let you go without one more song, and you're going to play... If you insist. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Uh, the, the song Too Bad for the Tin Man. Uh, can you set this one up for us? Oh, just about the way Toronto has been brutalized. This is one of the first songs. Actually, this is one of the first songs that, that we had as a band. And I remember being in a hotel in Toronto and Ian playing it for me. And I was just like, oh, my God. And he was like, it's about the Wizard of Oz. And I was like, what? I'm like, this is the heaviest song I've ever written about the Wizard of Oz. It's amazing. <laughs> okay, it's about the Wizard of Oz. This is Come On on the CBC Radio 3 Sessions with oh, Too Bad man. for the Tin Man. Songs about the Wizard of Oz and uh, how the Tin Man tried to get into Toronto in a Trojan horse. But he got caught by Stephen Harper, who is holding a baby and eating it. And he now is in the Don Jail with snow. And what's the song called? Too Bad for the Tin Man. This is the last song off our first album.
everyone out there. Put the hand on the radio or on your iPod or on your podcaster. Feel this with us. Brought him down Now he searches for a heart But they can never be found Gave us a reason So we took the rain So we got you down Stand on your body Scattered apart All over the town Yes, we did Come on on the CBC Radio 3 Sessions. Thanks for this week's recordings to Bruce Derrick, James Booth, Chris Frey, and Marie Bartlett. For more live off-the-floor studio recordings, check out our website at cbcradio3.com. I think the world. Next week, we'll infuse your ears with pop music from Germans. That's Germans next week on the CBC Radio 3 Sessions. I'm Tarek. Thanks for listening.